Hello and welcome. This is Mike. I'm a software engineer based in London, United Kingdom. And today I'm going to talk about state management in React and React Native. And mainly I'm going to talk about a library called MobX, which really simplifies state management. And unlike Redux, um, it requires you very little boilerplate code. And with MobX, we've been successfully using it at my company uh, for a couple of years. And we have developed a FinTech mobile app uh, with that, and it worked marvelously well. And we also have a web app which predates it. And the funny thing is that um, web app is written in Redux. And every time I have to do any work on it, I really miss MobX and how concise it is. And before I start talking about what Mobux is, just a few points about Redux and why I think there are a few problems with it. Um, just a couple of days ago, I stumbled upon this tweet, and I really resonate with it, and I'm sure my colleagues would also concur, that Redux is great for extracting your state um, out of components, but then the code which manages the state, end up in a very different places. Because if you think about it, the usual architecture for using Redux is something like that. Um, you have a component which at some point triggers an action creator, which dispatches an action, which then um, goes into reducer, and finally that um, re-renders your component. So, in this session, when we'll do some live coding, we'll take a simple app written in Redux, we'll see the problem, and we'll see how MobX will make it much more concise. And MobX um, relies on the observer pattern, and that means it's not afraid to mutate the state. And that really results in how concise the code is for managing your state. Similarly, MobX stores are also a great place for putting your business logic. And it also allows you to easily unit test it. And um, a funny trivia is that the creative MobX is now working for Facebook, so um, I think it enjoys some support in the community. And at this stage, um, we'll proceed to some live coding. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate to you um, a simple app I created with React and um, Redux. It's another to-do app. Um, it shows uh, to-do items and it allows you to add a new one. For example, we can add an item called convert it to Mobax. And it will appear on our screen. Um, the key thing about this app um, it doesn't store data in memory. Um, it actually um, sends calls to um, a web server, which returns this list of items and accepts new ones. Uh, the reason for that, I wanted to um, make this example a bit more real because often uh, we do uh, need to make HTTP calls, and I think this is important. Um, to understand how you can work with that when you're choosing a state management library. Now, if you dive into the code, um, we will see that um, we have two um, components on the same level, which you just saw on the screen. One of them is uh, for added new to-do items, and the other one lists uh, all the to-do items we have. And that really highlights um, a necessity for having state management because we have those sibling components uh, which do need to um, exchange data. And if you look at new to do, it's like a pretty um, simple component um, where um, we display an input item and allow adding a new one via um, a Redux action creator. And similarly, the component which lists to do items 
um, what it's got. Um, when we um, render it, um, it calls use effect uh, to get to do's, which is another um, uh, Redux action creator, and um, then it gives properties um, with to do items, which it displays on the screen. So component wise, it's it's nice and easy. It's just mostly pure React with a few um, React Redux um, high level, high order components. Um, which provide us Redux plumbing. But um, if you look into um, how our Redux store is structured, that's where the things um, get a little bit more verbose. And first of all, we can see um, we're create a store. We have one file. Um, it gets reduced to this, and because we use HTTP calls, it also has to apply middleware thank to enable um, uh, asynchronous action creators. And here we are, we have like, you know, action creators. And um, once again, the code is not particularly complicated, right? Um, when it comes to getting to do, um, um, we send this to be required, we wait for it, then we dispatch an action. And when we do to do, we do similar thing, but we call uh, the existing action creator. And then we have reducers, which create a new state. And finally, we have constants, which define the action names. And this is the model which has to be shared between action creators and reducers uh, to know that we are talking about the same action. So to summarize, although all those bits like reducers and action creators are not particularly complicated, uh, on their own, if we combine them, we'll see that we add this big verbosity to our code. And sometimes it becomes a little bit um, complicated to see what's going on where. And right now, having said that, I'm gonna demonstrate to you how we can replace this um, pretty verbose code of Redux with something more concise uh, than with um, more bugs. So let's start. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, delete um, the contents of store.js file, and I'm gonna start writing um, a mobax store. So typically in mobax, um, we use clusters. And I'm going to create a class called to do store. And um, in that class, uh, we're going to define um, a property called to do's. And it's going to be an MCRA. And it'll hold our to do items. And we're going to decorate it um, with observable, which is one of the key uh, concepts of Mobax. Um, what observable is, um, it allows us to, to decorate uh, this property or even a variable. It doesn't even have to belong to a class. And every time there is a change to that variable or property, it will notify all them observers, which are going to be React components, and it will re-render them. So having defined a variable which will hold all data, um, our next step is to define actions which will perform manipulations on the data. And as we have seen before uh, with our Redux example, there are actually two actions here, retrieving data and um, updating it. So let's start with retrieving data. Uh, we're gonna define um, a method called get to this. Um, it's uh, gonna be a mobex action. And it's also gonna be an asynchronous method because we're making an HTTP call and we use async await for that. So similar to Redux, it's gonna be actually that simple. We're gonna 
I use uh, fetch to get data uh, from uh, the API and I need to put a wait here and then we need to get um, JSON data from it. So we do a wait result JSON. And finally, we assign the result to our to-dos. So this is really simple. We just uh, created an action which um, performs something, in this case, uh, fetching data from an API, and it assigns to um, our variable, which is marked as observable. So when we start looking at components, you will see how they'll get re-rendered. And quickly, I'm gonna do the same thing for um, adding a new to-do item. So as you can imagine, we just need to create another method which is gonna be decorated with action and put up to-do, which will accept an argument of um, to-do item. And similarly, we also need to perform a fetch operation in this instance um, is going to be a post request because we added a new item, body is to do. And once it's completed, um, we are going to refresh our to do's um, because we want to make sure that our entire front end is driven by the back end so that they're all at the same state. Okay, so this is basically it when it comes to defining your stores. Just one single file, just one single class, and just like, you know what, 20 lines of code, which um, define our data, mark it as observable, and define actions which allow us to perform uh, certain things on the data. So, so far so good, right. Another thing we need to do is to um, um, look at our components and see if they require any changes. So let's start with a to-do component. Um, so you will see that, um, as I demonstrated to you before, um, this component does two things. Um, on use effect, um, it calls get to-dos and then it just displays a list of items. So the only thing we need to change here is instead of um, getting to this properties and method called get to do's, um, this component as a property will get a to do store. And we're gonna call to do get to do's and to do store. And similarly, um, to do this, I'm gonna be on to do store, right? That's cool. Um, we won't need map state across and map dispatch across. And what this component will need is it will have to become an observer, um, which, as I said before, is a mobile uh, uh, concept. We have observables. Um, which our data, we have performed different actions on, and we have observers which react on changes um, in the data. So I'm going to import it uh, from uh, Mobax React. And it's almost that. Uh, of course, you may wonder uh, where this property to do store will come from. Uh, similar to Redux, uh, there will be another um, um, higher order component um, provided by the function called inject, which will inject um, the stores uh, into our component. It's got like the syntax. Um, it maps actually a number of different stores. Um, in our example, um, there is just one store uh, called to do, and uh, it maps it onto a list of properties. Uh, VS Code says I've got a syntax error somewhere. I think, yeah, that's because inject returns a function, which allows me to wrap my observer. And with the simple manipulations, uh, we have changed uh, our to do's component. Uh, 
uh, to use Mobax. Um, it's very something to go and run the code right now, but chances are it's going to fail, so we need to do uh, two more things. We're going to do the same for our new to-do component, which will even be easier, and then we change uh, the wiring and the provider. So with the new to-do component, as you can imagine, uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, to inject the store and modify what happens when you click on the button. We're going to call to do store app to do. Our map dispatch the pros will disappear. And what we're going to export is going to be even simpler. In this instance, new to do doesn't even have to be a Mobix observer because uh, this component does not have to re-render or change it. So the only thing we need to do is just inject um, the store into it. So new to the store. And we'll map all our Mobex stores onto um, properties of this component. And we'll wrap it in it. And now we just need to remove all these imports. The interesting thing is even our import statement become more concise and just import inject from Mobax React. Right. So we have ported another component onto um, Mobax. So as I said, the final thing is uh, to do a bit of plumbing and it's going to be very similar. So. What I haven't shown you before, but you may guess, right? So somewhere um, there is a file where we map, we wrap our entire application um, inside the provider, which uh, injects um, the Redux store. So we're going to do exactly the same thing um, with uh, Mobax. Instead of uh, importing provider from Redux React, uh, do it for Mobax React, and similar like I did before, I'm just gonna do to do store is new to do store. And to do store lives in store slash store. So, so far, let's just go and test it. And I'm just gonna cross my fingers that I have not messed something up. Okay, to do is inject is not defined, to do is not defined. Okay, demo gremlins. Um, yes, I have forgot to import inject. And to do is not defined in to do's JSX. Uh, which line? Okay, here I made the top typo. Okay, it has to do. Boom. By mail, calls that agent converted to Mobax. What a new item. Uh, record a video. Excellent. Okay, probably I should uh, change the title into to do Redux and do Mobax. So within literally five, 10 minutes, uh, what we did, we've taken um, a small Redux application, and we convert it into Mobex. And I think uh, that really allowed us to A, reuse most of our um, components like to-dos and new to-do, make some little changes when it comes to um, how we wire things, and write our store, which is like you know, far more concise now that we have like you know, a single class with just like two methods, as opposed to action creator, action reducers, and one observable. And now I can safely uh, delete um, other files of Redux and see that my app still um, works and maybe add another to the item, which is have breakfast, because I'm recording this video early in the morning and it still works. Um, another thing I just want to point out like I was talking before um, in terms of observables and observers. So our data is observable 
and our components um, observers. And so what it means, to do is a good example. So um, if inside our observer, we access um, our observable, like in this case, to do's, every time to do's will change, Mobex will automatically notify all observers and it will trigger a render. So nice and easy, Mobex um, does the heavy lifting for us. Okay, and um, so, um, if you're interested in seeing that code, it's um, available on GitHub. Uh, there is an example of Redux application and there is an example of the Mobox application plus um, the Node.js server which serves data so you can see it for yourself, you can play it for you, with yourself. And I just want to highlight once again the work we've done, right? So if you have a look at the Redux store, even if you combine it in the a single file, it will be still quite verbose in comparison to what we see on the left hand side with Mobax. And I think with Redux, personally, it's not just verbose, but sometimes it's a bit difficult to see what things are doing. Like we have action creators, we have reducers, and Mobax is far more concise. And if you just look at components side by side, you will see that our render function hasn't dramatically changed. Um, like, what changed is the properties we're injecting, and we could actually do it even in the same way as in Redux to inject um, properties which hold data and functions and which perform actions. And instead of doing map dispatch to prof, we do observer and inject. Um, some of you may wonder um, about hooks. And in this instance, I'm not talking about use the fact and use states because we have already used them. But recently, React introduced hooks such as use selector and use dispatch, which replace map dispatch to props and um, map state to props. And so easy. Mobox actually has similar mechanism. Um, you can use uh, hooks instead of um, uh, wrapping your components inside inject. In my personal opinion, it couples your components too much to a state management library, so that if you, right now, your components will have knowledge of that through hooks as opposed to getting information through properties. In my opinion, um, if you do unit testing of your components, that will make it slightly more awkward, because instead of just pass in correct properties, you'll have to um, mock um, your hooks. I mean, which is doable, but in my opinion, not the best way, but really it's up to you. Mobex doesn't mandate anything here. Um, another thing I wanted to highlight, um, I didn't show it in the demo. So Mobex has a number of other um, cool features. Like for example, uh, what you see on the screen, and that's taken from the official documentation. Um, so you may have defined uh, for your online shop something, um, an observable called price and amount. But equally, you may have architecture your application in a way that uh, there is a component which just displays total price, right? So that component doesn't really care about um, the price of each item or like you know an amount so easy um, you can define compute properties and they will trigger re-render of those components which depend on total every time one of the components of the formula changes that's actually as the official documentation says quite similar to formulas in excel um, and i just prepared a list of um, possible questions i may get and one of them is, can you have multiple stores? Easy. Um, in Mobax, you can define as many stores as you want. Uh, for example, in the applications we are currently working, we have around I don't know, 10 or 15 different stores for different features. Uh, another question, does it work with React Native? Of course. And actually, this is a React Native meetup, although I showed the React Lab, but it works with React Native fantastically well, and we do it. Um, have we got debug tools? 
Hashimoto Redux uh, yes, it does, um, and they work quite, quite well. Um, you may all have also seen that uh, we use EMF decorators, like at observable. The question is, um, do you have to use them? Uh, actually, no, you can just um, use functions which will wrap your uh, variables or properties. I think a decorators are just a nice syntactic sugar which makes it more concise. Uh, now, does it work with any kind of components? Um, so it works with um, functional components, as you have seen, and it works with big fat components, React components. It doesn't do it with pure components now because of issue with should component update. And um, so guys, that's it. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask them on Slack or in YouTube comments. And uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter and chase me up with more questions. That's it. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.